Welcome back, everyone, to Onward with Scott Chesney. Today, I am joined by Dave Marver, Chief Executive Officer at Onward. Dave, how are you today? I'm doing great, Scott. It's a pleasure to be uh, here with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to dive right into it. People with spinal cord injury have been waiting a very long time to reclaim physical movement. Um, why Onward, and why is this time for this community to get excited? Well, Onward was founded seven, eight years ago uh, with the sole purpose uh, to develop and commercialize technologies and therapies to help people walk again, to be mobile. Uh, but we, of course, now recognize that there's so many other challenges that accompany uh, spinal cord injury. And we want to be able to address all of these things in order to give people uh, with these injuries, uh, better lives, and, and also to extend those benefits to their loved ones as well. And fortunately, our therapies have the potential to help in, in all of these areas. Dave, you've had a remarkable professional career uh, thus far, and everything has led you up to Onward. Um, take us through uh, your professional career and why Onward was the next logical step. Well, you're being very generous there. I, I, I have quite a, a bit of work to do to, to make the impact that I'd like to make on, on the world. And, and Onward is uh, and a, it's a privilege to lead Onward. And it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to, to make the sort of difference that I want to make. I've spent my whole career in med tech. And, and I, I like to work on things that, that help people and do good, but also that are hard and maybe that others haven't, uh, haven't tackled in the past. So I, I started my career with Medtronic, which is the world's largest medical device company. Uh, that was in the US and I was in uh, mainly cardiology focused uh, areas. And then they moved me to Europe in the early 2000s where I had a great opportunity to learn about the European markets and the cultural differences and, and all the great things about Europe. And, and then I moved back and had a variety of roles with them in cardiac surgery and diabetes. And then I had a chance at a pretty young age to be CEO of a publicly traded company, a NASDAQ listed company that was number two in the world in automated external defibrillators, the sort that you see hanging in airports and doctor's offices. And, and we also made equipment for cardiology offices like stress, uh, stress test treadmills and the like. And then I, um, after selling that business, I founded a couple of different startups. And what attracted me to Onward was, first of all, uh, remarkable technology, also very impressive science and research partners. You know, the caliber of work that's being done, uh, nearly everything they publish is in the world's preeminent science journals like Nature. So there's a really rigorous scientific underpinning. They understand the mechanisms of action, why these things work. Uh, and uh, you know, a lot of intellectual property already, a wonderful committed team. And so it was a great opportunity for me to come here and turn it into a, a viable, scalable business that can take these breakthroughs from the lab and turn them into therapies that can be, that can be deployed in clinics around the world, you know, that can finally help people. Uh, one of the things that struck me joining Onward was that over a billion dollars has flowed into research, SCI research in the U.S. over the last decade, but so few products have reached the clinic. And I think we at Onward can, can, can play a unique role and occupy this really important space that's called translation, taking these breakthroughs from the lab into the clinic. Dave, you have definitely distanced yourself uh, from the competition for what it is that you exactly said is um, we've heard so much about the research, so much about what's going on in clinics, but we're looking for the products. We're looking for the things that are really applicable to our lives that we can plug into our daily lives and bring back movement. Can you take us back to that first encounter that you had, whether it be through a clinical trial or just a general meeting, somebody with paralysis, with spinal cord injury, that just maybe like even personally just shook you and said, you know what, I need to do what I have to do to make a difference in this person's life. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you that when I initially was 
uh, looking at taking this role as the leader of Onward, I had a chance to meet with Dr. Jocelyn Block and uh, Professor Gregoire Cortine. Um, in the case of Professor Cortine, he's devoted the last 20 years to, to uh, bringing back movement. And, and Jocelyn Block is a wonderful partner for him, you know, in terms of translating that or bringing that out of uh, research and into the clinic. And just the passion that those two brought and their, their energy their, uh, their absolute commitment to making this real uh, was palpable. And I, you know, it, it can be difficult running a company, just to be honest. I mean, it's a 24 seven thing. And, and, uh, and I get so much energy out of dealing with them because you know, they are going to make this happen <laughs> with our help, certainly. But, but that commitment was, was quite important. And shortly after meeting them, I had the chance to go into uh, the Gate Lab here in uh, Switzerland and meet one of the subjects, one of the nine uh, subjects that were part of the first STEMO trial where they looked at stimulating the spinal cord with implantable technology, even in people that had, you know, Asia, a complete injury and restore the ability to walk. And I sat down with one of those subjects and uh, for a, a period of time and just got to know him as a person. And, and I think, Anybody who has empathy and humanity that speaks to somebody who has an injury and sees how they've been impacted, but also the courage that it takes to just uh, move forward. Uh, it's inspiring. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm a motivated person, always have been. I'm lucky to have been born that way and raised that way. But, but this just gives me that extra oomph, I would say. And so having you on board, Scott, and the voice of the injured, uh, at every one of our important meetings and when we're making important decisions, uh, that's critical. Uh, we also have on our board of directors, somebody, a very impressive uh, guy named Ian Curtis, whose daughter is injured. So at, at Onward, we wanna infuse the organization with really talented people who are, who are injured uh, to help us just get better, make good decisions, optimize our therapies, make sure that we don't have any wasted effort. You know, we. One of my uh, things I say is like, we cannot waste a day because, you know, anybody that has an injury, you don't want to be one in that wheelchair one more day than you have to, right? And so we just try to work every day with such urgency and passion and, and having you around and reminding us of, of that imperative is just critical. Thank you, Dave. Um, and, and that really um, translates to my next question. Um, we're always talking about when we're always talking about a timetable we're always talking about is it a few months is it a few years i know that there's a lot going on and because it's a company and because there's products and because there's rules and regulations i just want to bring back to the community where are we in this timetable and time frame and just an approximate and again there's so many different variables that are factored into this but if you could share with us that timetable, the time frame as to, you know, when the products, when the technology will be brought to the community and we can start to, not to say put it on our calendar, mm -hmm. but we could start to, because there's a lot and we'll be talking about that on Onward with Scott Chesney in this segment in terms of preparing for those days. So there's a lot we need to do as the community. But in terms of that time frame, when there's that anticipation of these products coming to market, coming to uh, our rehab centers, coming to hospitals. Um, what can you share with us at this time? Yeah, and I, I understand there's sort of a, you have to be guarded in your hope, right? And your expectations and, and not, uh, you know, and, and realistic at the same time. One of the things that I'm sure must be frustrating is you see universities developing things and you wonder why is that not coming to market? And it's because there's a, a complex series of events that need to occur in order to, to prepare something uh, for commercialization. And, and we're fortunate onward, we've assembled a, a very experienced team from medical technology who can do that. So that's a, an, uh, an R&D leader and, a, and an R&D team. It's uh, people with regulatory and clinical trial expertise. It's, uh, it's people with operating experience uh, who understand how to manage manufacturers and suppliers and, and uh, forecast demand and 
take and fulfill orders when they come in. All of this is important to, to build an infrastructure, to build a business that can then support and be viable long term. And, and we're, you know, we, we've spent the, the last several years putting that together and we're continuing on that journey. Okay, so to answer your question, how do you get this thing on the market and when? So you have to conduct what's called a pivotal trial, which is a trial designed to get regulatory approval. In the US, it's FDA, in Europe, it's CE marking. And this is typically a multi-center trial uh, that's sanctioned by the FDA. And the FDA then looks at the data that comes out of the trial and they give you either a 510K clearance or a PMA approval, depending on the classification of the device. We already have started our first pivotal trial. It was called Uplift. It started in January and we completed enrollment in December, early actually, despite all the challenges associated with COVID. So the team did a great job, but this also underscores the enthusiasm that the, the clinical community has for these therapies. This first pivotal trial studied our external stimulation device called ARC EX for its effectiveness in restoring uh, the strength and function of the hands and arms. So we expect to complete all of the, uh, the trial itself, analyze the data, submit the, the, the uh, package to the FDA the second half of this year. And if all goes well, we would expect to have FDA clearance for that ARC EX device for the upper limb indication of the first half of next year. So we're looking at 12, 15 months from now, if everything goes according to plan. We also have our implantable platform called ARC-IM that we're uh, looking at for restoring normal blood pressure, trunk control, walking. There are a number of different things we can do with that platform. And uh, that one we expect to have on the market, I would say in the 2024, late 2024, 2025, time frame. So not too far away, but the external will come first. Dave, that's fabulous news. And again, I know that there's so many variables that can change that, but I love that there's a focus. I love that there's a quote unquote finish line. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know for, from your perspective right now, what that finish line looks like when not if, but when those products come to market mm -hmm. and there's an opportunity for a Dave in Wyoming or a uh, Cynthia in France who are looking to reclaim movement, what does that finish line look for you from that person from a wheelchair who's seeking whatever type of movement it may be that they will be able to do to reach this product, reach these products? So the first technology, this external stimulator, the RKX, will be first available in clinics. So you would be able to go to you know, the Shepherds, the Kesslers, the VAs, wherever it is that you're going for ongoing care or rehabilitation. And, and that's the first place this technology will be available. We hope thereafter to get approval for, for use of this device in the home. So your caregiver could write a prescription, you could have this in your home and you could use it once or twice a week to continue to make gains or to consolidate gains that you may have realized using it in the clinic. Uh, when it comes to the implantable device, we foresee something similar in that, again, your, your caregiver in the clinic will say, you know, Scott, I think you're a good candidate for restoration of normal blood pressure or, or incontinence or whatever may be available. And, and they would consult with you. Hey, are you comfortable getting an implant and here are the considerations? And if so, you'd, uh, they would then refer you to what's called a functional neurosurgeon. And these are neurosurgeons who specialize in device therapy. They do implantation of pain devices, deep brain stimulators for essential tremor. It's a probably one or two hour procedure. You'd have it done. It's a 24 hour type uh, thing. And then you come back for rehab and ongoing care to your, your home clinic. So that's what, it, that's what we expect it will look like. And we will by then have put together an organization in the field to support the clinics, to train them on the on the effective use of these devices to support the implants and, and so on, as is very typical in, in the, the med tech field. So this is what we're uh, envisioning at this point. 
Dave, on behalf of the spinal cord injured population, I, I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for uh, making this commitment, for really giving us realistic hope. Um, part of what we're going to do in each episode here is that we're going to talk about preparation. So you're doing what you have to do mm -hmm. um, on your end and fulfilling your obligations. And again, we couldn't be more thankful. What we're going to do as a spinal cord injured population is that we're going to best prepare ourselves for those products, for that amazing technology, because as we've shared with this population, you, you just can't show up. You, you got to do whatever you can and just give you a little bit of insight as to what we're going to be like really strongly recommending and suggesting is for some people coming back to the drawing board and whether it be stretching or standing again, getting everything cleared by your physician, by your physical therapist, whoever you're working with. So whether it be someone who's just a couple months removed uh, from doing this or has never explored it in maybe three decades is that we want everybody to do what they can to best prepare themselves so their bodies and their minds are absolutely ready to, to take on this technology, to take on these products. So Dave, I want to thank you so much. I know this is just the beginning. We're going to be doing many more of these, but um, thank you so much for updating our community. Well, my pleasure, Scott. And I just have one additional comment to make, and, and it's a request more than anything. You referred to the finish line earlier in terms of getting this first technology uh, out there and available uh, for everyone. We don't think of it as a finish line at all. I mean, this is the starting gate for us. This is the first of, of many technologies and many therapies that we hope to commercialize. And my request is that we have, uh, we consider ourselves part of the SCI community and we want to have an open dialogue. We want to have, um, uh, get feedback and just continue to make better, uh, make our therapies better, make good decisions as to what we should focus on next. And, and again, not waste a single day here. And we can do that with the benefit of, of feedback from all of you. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you today, Scott. I hope we can do this uh, more often in the future. And uh, please let me know if I can be helpful. Well, consider that done. We always refer to the spinal cord injured population as family. We all talk with one another. We work together. So welcome to the family, Dave. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right, Scott. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you.